That in turn challenges the idea that lowering the age of offenders being dealt with by the youth court to include 12 to 13 year olds <laughs> is somehow going to change their lives to the better. I have to say, Minister, this has not been thought through. This is not about trying to improve the lives of young people and turn their lives around. This is about populist politics. It was about announcing something before the election called boot camps. This was going to solve the problem of our a young offenders, a very, very small group of young offenders in New Zealand. They say there's about a thousand of these young offenders. In fact, what we're talking about is a number of, and far less than that, that, this is, that that's the boot camps are to deal with, to deal with around 80 apprehensions. Not 80 offenders, 80 apprehensions. That's the police figures given to the Select Committee. In other words, one young offender might have been apprehended several times, which in fact means that there could be as few as 30 young offenders we're talking about. And out of that, we have a whole piece of legislation based on that small number. And I think the Minister has got it wrong, because the evidence we got before the Select Committee is that boot camps don't work. The members on the committee, Minister, didn't like them being called boot camps. <coughs> didn't like them being called boot camps. But the reality was, Mr. Spe Mr. Chairman, the uh, reality was Annette King. the reality was that the name boot camps wasn't given to the concept by the select committee. It wasn't given it to them by the submitters to the select committee. Boot camps was name of the programme was given by the Prime Minister of New Zealand, John Key. He was the person who labelled them boot camps, and he was the person that said this was going to be the mainstay of their approach to young people in New Zealand. What we heard at the Select Committee, Minister, was they don't work. They don't work, making them a little longer than they were before. They don't work. The other thing we heard, and this is why, what I'd like the Minister to answer, why did you need to put military style or boot camps into this legislation? What was the purpose other than for political point scoring? Because we know that you do not need this legislation if you wanted to run boot camps in New Zealand. You've already, Minister, got a pilot going at Burnham without the passage of this legislation. You pointed to other programmes that exist in New Zealand and said we want something like this and you didn't need legislation for it. So why was it necessary to write into law, waste the time of uh, Parliament and waste the time of the Select Committee with something that was totally unnecessary if you wanted to do it? And the other point I'd make, Mr, Mr. Chair, is you, if the Minister was really interested in evidence-based approach to trying to fix the problem, why would you not listen to what was told to you, Minister, about Te Hurihanga? The fact that you had a residential programme that works is far better than any other we have had in this country. I believe the reason they closed it was because it was a Labour programme. There can be no other reason. The Member of Parliament in the town itself knows it works, wanted us to go and see it. Members of Parliament in the past know it works and they wanted us to go and see it. We know it works and we wanted it to continue. And then we had the ridiculous situation of the Minister of Justice alongside the Minister of Social Development loading the entire cost of a new programme, including Capital Works, onto the children that were in there at that time. And as it was pointed out by... That is absolutely true, Minister, absolutely true. Go and read the statements of the Minister of Justice. You allocated the cost on every one of those children. And I will prove that to you, Minister, and table what was said by your Minister of Justice. And that's like when we opened the new public hospital in, w in Wellington at a cost of $300 million, that we said the first hip operation cost $300 million. The entire cost on one of the patients. It was a ridiculous argument then. It's a ridiculous argument now. And if you really wanted to do something about young offenders, you would look at what works.
Look at the evidence and what works in not only in New Zealand but around the world. But the Minister knows best. And sadly, we are not going to see a big change in our youth offending in New Zealand, our serious youth offending, because the evidence shows that this is not the right approach to take. I, I, would, I heard Leanne Dalziel's contribution and I wanted to add to it something that the Minister might like to have considered doing rather than talking about along with the Minister of Education and that is, that is implement your universal youth guarantee so that every young person under the age of 17 is in a job, is in training or is in education. You said, your Prime Minister said before the election 25,000 young people were in this category that needed education, training or a job. There are now over 40,000 young people in this category doing nothing. And what did the Minister of Education tell us today? There will be 2,000 places. Point of order, Honourable Paul Levin. I think we've been reasonably tolerant, Mr Chairman, but this is uh, well away from this part of the bill. It's talking about the youth guarantee and the Minister of Education. Uh, just a minute. Speaking to the point of order. Mr Chair, I related this to things that worked. I know the Minister mightn't like it, but I was relating order, it to programmes. Deal that, with the issue. Yes, I was relating it to programmes that work, and I was relating it to the need for young people to be in education, training or employment. We're talking about young youth offending, and I believe okay. I'm well inside the uh, yeah. scope of this. Yeah, I, I think there's always been um, a case where comparative debate has been used and in itself uh, if the connection isn't made then it's outside the scope of the bill but I think in this case it's, it's inside. Honourable Annette King. Mr Chair, can I just reiterate that 2,000 positions have been promised by the Minister of Education out of over 40,000 young people. Uh, they will be doing nothing. And as they say, idle hands will mean that there are going to be young people tempted into all sorts of activities we don't want to see them tempted into. There's not 25,000 anymore. There is over 40,000. And so if this government was serious about turning around the lives of young people who face a hopeless situation when there is no job and no future for them, then they would be doing more than bringing in this order, pathetic order. bill. Katrina Shanks. It's my pleasure.